hi guys welcome to my channel and if you're a returning subscriber welcome back um my name is elizabeth and i'm a small business owner that has an online store a physical store and i sell through vending machine i don't want to do a long intro because i know you guys just want to get to the t okay so um let's do that so you want to start a business i love that for you i think that's a great idea that's a very very important thing to do in this day and age so in this video i'm going to be sharing with you guys all of the things okay all of the things that you need to do to get started with your business like i said i have an e-commerce store i've had it for a couple of years i recently just opened up a new store and um i also sell through vending machines and i sell beauty products so um yeah let's get right into the rest of the video the first thing you need to do if you want to start your own online business is to determine what kind of products you want to sell. So if you want to determine the products that you want to sell, I always recommend that you do two things. The first one being you need to select a product that solves a problem or a product that addresses some sort of um, some sort of problem, some sort of issue. Um, so when I say a product that solves a problem, it could be if you have a uh a secret tool on how to mm, get rid of acne in two days that solves a specific problem anyone with acne issues would be drawn to that or your product can address like a societal problem or a, a, a problem in society or maybe like world hunger something along those lines those are the two type of products that i recommend now i know that a lot of people um we'll start a business based off of the skills that they have maybe you love baking and you want to start a business baking i don't think there's anything wrong with that i just think that um products that are easy to market is really important and the products that are easy to market are products that already have a target market it means that the problem exists in the society People need solutions to this problem and your product is going to solve that. So those are the two types of product that I would recommend that you select that you um, start your business with. Okay, so I want you guys to kind of ponder on, on that. And another thing that I want to mention is that you guys don't need to create something unique. You don't have to create something um, that has never been done before. You just have to add your own spin to it. So when I say, for instance, if you wanted to start a, a, a business that sells T-shirts, obviously there are thousands and millions of T-shirt brands, brands out there. But your brand could be targeting a specific type of customer. It could be people who um, have anxiety and that's what your brand is focusing on. And that's it. That's your business. You don't have to target anyone. You know, trying to sell your products to everyone is literally selling to no one. And we're going to chat about that a little bit later on in this video. And I should give you guys a disclaimer. This is going to be a long video. It's about maybe 40, 45 minutes. And the reason why I know that is because this is my second time filming this video. I filmed it before and then I had problems with my SD card. So I have to film it again. So make sure you guys like and subscribe to my channel because I'm literally doing this all over again. But anyway, so now that we have our products sorted out, we know what we want to sell. The product is great. It solves a problem. The next thing that I want you guys to do is I want you guys to go into the market and take a look at who's already selling this product. What are they doing and how are they selling it? Now, like I said, you don't have to um, create something that has never been created before. If you, if you have the, the idea to do it, that's fine. You can do that. However, majority most of the time you know a product that you want to sell will probably be on the market already so i want you guys to go and take a look at what is this product seen on the market who is currently selling this product who are they selling it to how are they selling it what is your customer saying is there demand for this product does it the, when you when you do your and this is just what you call competitive analysis and once you do that it helps you know what this company is probably lacking in right so if you go to their social media handles, you go to their website, see what they're selling it at, what price are they selling it for, what does their review say, when you go to their social media, what does their comment section say, what are people saying about this product, and what are some of the things that this company is probably not doing right that you can use as, a, as an advantage for you. Also, how much are they selling this product for? Because that also, you know, can impact your business in terms of if they're selling this product for a certain price, complaining about the pricing of the product, 
that could be a competitive analysis, a, a competitive advantage for you. So you can structure your business in such a way that, you know, it's not overly expensive, if that makes sense. So now that you have your product, you've got into the market, you've kind of surveyed who's selling this product, you know how much it's selling for, and you think that this is a great product for you to start selling. The next thing for you to do is to find a supplier to make the product for. Okay, so how do you find a supplier for your products? Now, there are two different routes that you can take. The first route being you can find a supplier that currently has that product in stock and you can get them to put your label on it. And that's what we call private labeling. And majority of the suppliers, you can find them overseas. The one um, platform that I personally like to use is called um, Alibaba. Alibaba has a wide variety of um of suppliers and i do 100 percent recommend using alibaba and we'll chat a little bit about how to interact with suppliers on alibaba now the reason why i recommend alibaba is because they have something called trade assurance so trade assurance is something like um seller's assurance something similar that paypal might have it means that you know the money is collected but um the money is collected by alibaba and then it is dispersed to the seller so if you have any issues with the products or any issues with the anything that happens on there you can you know get your money back essentially you can you know dispute you can connect with alibaba to describe that you have any problems or any, any issue and this is very important because if you're working with an overseas supplier if they scam you i mean you're not going to fly to China to go and fight them. So you want to make sure you're using a platform that protects you as a new business owner. Okay. So now that we've gone to Alibaba, we've surveyed, we've kind of figured out this product. I want to get it by this supplier. Like I said, you can either have them manufacture it for you or have them put your logo on an existing product. When you put your logo on an existing product, that is called private labeling. It means that the product exists. You're putting your logo on it. You're getting them to design a unique packaging for you. And that's it. Now, some people might manufacture products from scratch and that's okay as well. Um, this probably will take longer because you need to, um, you know, create the design for the product. You need to get them to make you a sample. You know, you guys will go back and forth, back and forth for a while until you finally get to the final product that you want to sell. And then you, they can manufacture that for you. Another issue with um, doing going this route is that it's really difficult for someone who wants to start really small. And the reason being that for those types of production, they might ask you to do 10,000 quantity or 1,000 quantity or 3,000 quantity. And if you're starting really small, you don't, you're still new to the market. You don't know what's going to, what's going to take off. So you might not want to make that full financial investment and you might not even have the money to invest. So I always recommend for new upcoming businesses that you try out private labeling. Like I said, it's an existing product. They put your logo on it. You get them to design a unique packaging to you. And that's going to set you apart from everyone else that is probably selling that product. And yeah, that's essentially how that works. There's nothing else. The only thing you would have to pay would be like a logo fee. And that's it. The minimum, the minimum other quantity for this um, route is typically low. You can get someone 10 pieces or 15 or 20 or 100, which is much better than, you know, going the crazy route. So those are the two options. Now, how do you work with suppliers on Alibaba? I do a wide variety of things, right? When I go into the app, I would search up if I'm looking for shoes, for instance, I would search up shoes on Alibaba and then I would kind of scroll through um, all of the suppliers that they have. My top, the top three things that I look for is the supplier that is verified, the supplier that also have um, reviews on their page and suppliers that have actual photos. So when I go on there and I see that this supplier seems to have like actual product photos on their page, they have reviews. I go through the reviews to make sure it's the real reviews, not reviews that they left by themselves. And how do I know it? I don't know. It's just something that I'm used to. I'm, I'm able to spot mm, this kind of looks shady, like beautiful, unique. <laughs> like, I don't think anyone who wants to leave an actual real review will say something like that. So I always look at things like that. 
And then once I do that, I would reach out to the supplier and send them a message. And then I'll ask them a couple of questions and say, can you send me an actual photo of this product? Now, on their page, they would have product photos that is done in a studio or done somewhere. But before I actually go through an order, I would say, can you send me an actual photo? So use your phone, grab the product in your hand and take a photo for me. Take a photo and send it to me. I would also ask them to send me a video if I want. So these are ways that you want to make sure that what you're getting is not horrible. Because sometimes you might order a product that you think looks good. And once you get it, it looks a certain, it looks a different way. So make sure that, you know, you're going through this route. And an alternative for you guys is to just order a sample. Um, for certain products, I will order a sample because I want to test it out to make sure it's actually pretty good and the quality is good. And these are products that you cannot tell just from the photo. Say skincare products or makeup products, you can't just tell if the quality is good just by looking at it. You have to order a sample and just test it out for yourself. Okay. Now you have, you know what you want to sell. Um, you've done your market analysis. You've seen that okay, this is a pretty good product and I want to try selling this product. You've gone into Alibaba, you found yourself a supplier. Once you find yourself your supplier, you've gotten your samples, you've taken a look at it and everything looks good. Now what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to create a business plan and it doesn't have to be something complex. I just want you guys to think about what is the cost of this product and how much am I going to sell this product for, for me to make a profit. Now, what are some of the things that go into the cost of a product? Number one, the product cost itself the cost of packaging, the cost of shipping the products to you, the cost of um, customs when your product and, um, arrives to you. And the other small cost would be like the cost of listed on your website and all those stuff. But the main cost are the ones that I've listed. I want you guys to calculate how much does it cost for me to bring in one of this product? How much is the cost of the product shipping, packaging, custom? How much does this product come to? And once you get the cost of the product, I want you to then multiply it by two and see if it's something that makes sense for you guys to sell. Now that's what I always do. If a product costs me $10, I'm going to put it in market for 20. And the reason why I do that is because there are other costs associated to the products, the cost of um, your shipping labels or your packaging labels or the cost of your website or you know the cost of marketing if, if you decide to do paid marketing as well so once you have your cost of goods which is the cost of getting one of these products to you multiply that by two and look into the market because you've done the market analysis and see does this make sense for me to sell this product for twenty dollars so if the product costs 10 and i'm wanting to sell it for 20 and I've done a, my market analysis and most people are selling this product for 15 then I personally I, I wouldn't go ahead with that because for me it doesn't make any sense you, even if you're making your sales you're making orders you're getting orders your product your profit is going to be really really low because if it costs you $15 $10 to get the product and you're selling it for 15 that's a $5 profit and a $5 profit really isn't a $5 profit in your pocket because like I said there are a lot of other fees that you need to consider. It's easy, payment processing fee. You know, if somebody orders your uh, product on your website for $100, Shopify is going to take a percentage um, of that in terms of your payment fees, right? So these are all the things you need to consider. In terms of pricing, you need to look at, is this profitable for me to do as a business okay if you look into it and you see that most people are selling this product for 50 and it cost me ten dollars to get you're like that is a great product now you don't even have to sell your products for fifty dollars you can sell your products for maybe forty dollars you're still making thirty dollars in profit but you're also com you're also competing in the market based on pricing so most people might want to shop from you because your products are cheaper you get it Okay, you've done your business plan, you've looked at it and you said, this is a profitable product for me to sell. This is a profitable business for me to start. The next thing I want you guys to do is to create your brand identity. And how do you do that? There's a lot of things that goes into um, you know, creating a brand. 
what you want your brand to be known for in the market um but a few things that you need to take into consideration is to create a logo have your colors and have your typography now if you want to create a logo just go into canva canva you can do a 30-day free trial for pro or you can just use it for free there are a lot of free templates on there that you can use a lot of people might say no get a professional logo which is fine i just don't think it's necessary for you to invest five hundred dollars a thousand dollars to create a unique special logo when you can do something nice and clean in canva to start off with once you not start to you know get some traction and you know you can then decide to create a unique logo you know create a trademark and all of those fun stuff okay now once you have your logo created in canva you can also determine you can also use canva as a guide to determine what your brand colors are i will always recommend taking two uh, choosing two and then maybe one additional as like an alternative as well so in and that means you know if you're going to pick a color you're going to pick maybe pink and red or pink well not pink and red that's a bit maybe pink and white or pink and black or something like that just pick two colors and stick to that color in everything that you do relating to your brand okay there are certain um colors that would elicit certain emotions from your potential customers for instance so in the um i don't know maybe your products are like vegan and clean and you know natural some people might want to go with white and green because those colors are associated with products within that niche if that makes sense anyway so pick your two product pick your two colors and you have your logo you have your typography your typography is just a text that your brand is going to be known as and i would also recommend just picking two you want everything to be clean and just nice you don't want too much you don't want everything to be cumbersome just green black yellow purple too much just pick two and call it a day okay now that you have your brand identity you have your logo set up the next thing i want you guys to do is to take care of all the legal aspects of starting your business now this is going to be different from country to country and even city to city okay but the overall or the the overall um idea around creating your brand identity is determining if you want to set up your business as a sole proprietorship which means that your business is owned by you and you alone a partnership which means your business is owned by you and a friend or you and a friend and your mom you can have multiple people as partners in the business or you want your business to be set up as a corporation which means your business is a completely different entity to you and like I said, from country to country, you know, the um, the type of cooperation would be different. So determining the type that you would want to do, what I would recommend for you to start off with would be a sole proprietorship or maybe a partnership if you're doing it in collaboration with somebody else. OK, you're going to pick a name for your business. And once you pick a name for your business, you're going to do a no one search. A search means that you're going to check to make sure that no one else has that name. You, no one else is using that name for a business, essentially. Once you have that checked, you have your name, you've registered your business, you have your business number, you have your tax ID numbers. And this is just like a, um, a PSA for anyone living in Canada. If you're um, not... If you don't project that your business is going to make over $30,000 every month, I'm sorry, every year, you don't need to collect GST. As you guys already know, as small business owners or as business owners in general, you are required to collect GST and then remit that money to the government. But if you're not, if you don't think your business is going to make over $30,000, you don't need to register for GST and collect GST. Okay, this is just my personal experience, but make sure you ask your financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you what I know based on my experience. Okay, now you've registered your business. You have registered for any licenses that you might need. And yes, if you're operating from um, even from your house, if you're, you have an online store, you need a business license in your city. So make sure that you check your city's website to um, figure out what kind of license that you would need. Okay, even though you're selling online, you still have your inventory at a specific location in the city. 
and that's your business location so you do need to get a license for that okay so let's do a quick recap and then we'll carry along you have determined that you want to sell a product that solves a problem or addresses a societal problem or societal issue in the in the world you know we already know that's what we want to do you've done your competitive analysis you know who's selling what you've determined um, who your supplier is how you're going to get it you've created your brand identity you've registered your business you know that this is what my business is going to be called you know the products you want to sell everything is nice and good now we need to determine where we're going to sell our products now i'm this video is going to be focused on selling your products online and there are basically two different routes that i would recommend for you guys one being you can sell through a marketplace or two being you can sell on your own website selling a marketplace means you're selling on a platform that already has their own customer base and a platform like that is like etsy Etsy, for instance, um, has a customer base and Etsy owns the website, it owns Etsy. And what you're doing is you're listing your store on Etsy in the hopes that customers, their customers and maybe your customers as well can buy products from you. Now, this is if you're going to go with the easy route. Now, if you go with this route, Etsy um, will charge your listing fee. Etsy would also charge you a fee for helping you complete the transaction aside from the any of the charges that is the payment processing fee okay so there's a listing fee I think it's about one dollar or 99 cents or 50 cents I cannot remember there is payment processing fee this is for anywhere you're processing payments online and then there is a fee for selling on Etsy as well so that's like a platform that you can use Another platform like a marketplace is like Amazon. So Amazon also has, has the marketplace options where you can sell your products on Amazon. Now I've never sold any products on Amazon, but I know that there are two ways to do it. You can either send your products, ship your products on Amazon website and um, to an Amazon warehouse and Amazon would um, ship the products to your customers as they order it or you can fulfill those orders yourself so if somebody orders on your store on amazon you ship that product out the second option is to create your own website and that means that this website is owned by you and it's your responsibility to drive traffic to your website now for me personally in my business that's what i do i have my own personal website using shopify and i promote my business online on social media to get traffic to go to my website to buy from me now shopify doesn't charge me a um, listing fee the only thing i have to pay shopify is a subscription fee every month and right now shopify is offering a dollar um a dollar every month for the first three months and afterwards it would go to i think 38 usd and 51 canadian and whether you sell anything or not you have to pay 51 dollars every month in canadian dollars um for your shopify subscription okay now like i said before on shopify you also have to pay payment processing fee it's a standard on any online platform that you're getting uh, that you're tr um, doing transaction using cards okay so personally i would recommend going with the shopify route like i said it's for free for seven days and then afterwards it's one dollar for every month for three months i think three months is a great start for someone to determine if they want to keep doing this business it's just a dollar every month what you have to lose so use shopify and if you don't want to use shopify there are other platforms like wix there's squarespace i've i use wix for one of my other businesses but for like an e-commerce store yeah, i 100 percent using shopify now once you um once we've determined that we're going to be using shopify the next thing is for you to set up your website in a professional way so shopify has um different templates that you can use and edit um for your website and i recommend using the dawn template i think it's really clean really um really elegant and very simple i will always recommend if you don't know what you're doing do something that looks at the simplest okay because that looks professional to most people 
um, on, on Shopify, you're going to add your products. Um, I recommend taking your own product photos. Okay. Get a friend, get your sister, get anyone to model for you and take your own product photos. You don't need to buy a unique camera. Use your phone to take your own product photos. And when you're uploading your photos to Shopify, please make sure that the orientation of your photos are all the same across the board. Okay. Don't take portrait and then take landscape and then take you know just make sure it's the same orientation so it's if it's three by four it's three by four for all photos to make sure that everything looks clean and professional upload your product photos add your product description shopify has ai assistant that can help you to create descriptions for your products um you ju you're just going to type a couple of sentences and it would add more for you if you don't want to use shopify you can use chat gpt um you can use canva all of these tools have AI that if you give them a few prompts, they can write out a whole product description for you. You've uploaded your product, you've added your product description, you're going to add your pricing, you're going to add all of the information that you need to add and set up your website in a professional way. Like I said, make sure your website is fully optimized, it looks professional. You know, when people get on your website, they know that. This person knows what they're doing. I also recommend adding different apps onto your website. One of the apps that I recommend is, is an app that allows you to collect reviews. One of those apps is like Judge Me Reviews. Um, another app that I recommend for you guys to, to download is called Honeycomb Proof Seal. I think that's what it's called. And essentially what that app does is when somebody buys from you, those pop-ups are going to show on the app saying somebody bought this, that person bought that. And what that does is it gives people who come to your website um, social proof. It helps them know that, okay, maybe people actually do shop on this website and maybe I should buy something from this person as well. Okay, so another thing that I want you guys to consider when um, building your website is to think about your customer's journey what does that look like from the moment they landed on your website to the moment they checked out of your website you know you you don't want to have annoying pop-ups everywhere um on even photos we are very visual beings so once we land on a website and it looks sketchy the likelihood that i would want to put my credit card information on that website is slim. so make sure that your website is um, well optimized um, you've added all the necessary apps that you need to add and um, you know once your customer gets on your website they're convinced that this is um, a legitimate website to begin with and secondly you have enough things on your website that shows that people buy from you or people support your brand you know once your brand has social proof you know, more people are more likely to want to shop from that brand and support them. Okay. Now that we have all of that out of the way, the next thing that you guys need to start thinking about is marketing. How are you going to market your products to your final consumers, right? You have your products, you have your website, everything looks good. Everything looks professional. This is the most important step because if you have the most amazing product or service out there, that nobody knows about then it's just a product or service that nobody knows about the so marketing is the most important skill that you can have as a small business owner okay so how do you market your products use social media to market your products um, if I were to recommend one social media platform it would be TikTok. TikTok is amazing for small businesses the audience on there are supportive you know they would ride for you it's almost as if it's our brand that's how you know the tiktok audience feels like so make sure you set up your tiktok account make sure it's the same name as your business name set up an instagram account as well you know you can utilize reels to promote your product as well now those are the two options that i recommend in terms of marketing platforms um you can also do paid marketing it's up to you. You can do TikTok marketing, you can do um, Instagram marketing or paid. But to start off with, I would recommend just doing um, free marketing and see how it goes. Okay. Now, you have everything set up. You have the product, you have your website, your legal, your everything's legal. You have everything set up. 
now it's time for you to launch your brand now i don't want you guys to just go and launch a brand and yeah just keep it as that i want you guys to create a pre-launch strategy and a post-launch strategy we're going to chat about that in this section and this section is going to focus on um your pre-launch strategy and here's what i want you guys to do okay i want you guys to um set up your website and have it so that um when someone lands on your website it will take them to your password page and the password page essentially just means that your website is not open to the public yet but it's there but what I also want you to include on that password page is a form that allows you to collect emails, phone numbers, and all that. Now, typically, most Shopify password pages um, already has the form on there, and your customers are able to, um, you know, get uh, your customers are able to put their name and their email address. So what happens would be that you're going to promise them 10%, 15%, 20%, some type of percentage off for when you do launch your brand. Okay. So your website is currently password page protected and um, anyone who lands on your website needs to submit the email address and you're going to notify them before your launch. Now. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to create a two weeks plan where you're going to continuously market your brand, market yourself on social media, and ensure that you direct all of those traffic to your um, password landing page for people to subscribe for when you launch. How do you do that? You're going to create several types of content on social media. You're going to create educational content, you're going to create entertaining content. You're going to create controversial content. You're going to create different tiers of content. And each of those content is going to be around who you are, who your brand is, and what you are here to offer. Okay? Make sure your videos are straight to the point, 30 seconds. You, um, especially when you're new on TikTok, that your new face. Nobody knows you. Nobody has seen your face before. We don't have time to listen to you speak for 20 minutes. Get to the point. And that's why I recommend doing 30 seconds, a maximum of one minute video talking about your brand and what your brand stands to offer. But when you create your videos, and before I carry on with this section, I have a ebook, a marketing ebook. It's called Market Like a Pro. It's a 30 page ebook. And it also includes one five minute video showing you how to edit on TikTok. And I'll link that in the description as well. If you want to go check that out, I recommend that you do if you don't know anything about social media marketing. Okay. But I'm still going to give you guys tips in this video. Like I said, anyway, so you want to make sure that your videos are short and sweet, short and sweet. Okay. Straight to the point. And you're going to be talking about your, the benefit of your products. Okay. So instead of going on and saying, um, so my name is this, I started this and you know, I've been this, da, 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 da. You can say that once you have a certain number of followers, but before you get to those number of followers, you want to make sure that your, your videos are direct, direct and speaking to a certain type of person. So for instance, if your, if your product sells acne, if your product solves acne, your video is going to start off saying something like this if you suffer from acne then i have a solution for you make sure you watch this video to the end and make sure you like and follow and then you're going to go into talking about how you what your product is and how it's going to help that person going through acne and then you're going to give them a call to action at the end of the video and your call to action will always be make sure you go sign up on my website for when i launch my product okay so you're going to start off with a hook and a hook is something that allows people to stop. So people on social media, you have like three seconds to capture their, their attention. So you're going to put a hook and the hook is something that's going to get them to stop, to listen to what you have to say. And the hook is something like I just, like I just said, I, another one could be, um, I cured my acne in two days and this is what I did. Anyone who suffers from acne would be curious to know, wait, what, two days, what did you do to solve it? 
and then you can then talk about how you use this product for two days and after using it my problems were solved and people will be like if you want to get this product it's going to be launching in two weeks make sure you go check out the link in my bio and sign up okay I need to go back a few steps because I started getting excited when I was talking about this. I need to go back a few steps and tell you guys some of the things that you need to do for your account to even get started. Now, if you're using TikTok, once you create your account, make sure you optimize your bio. Make sure you put um, a name that is your business name. Make sure in the description, in your bio, you put what you sell, what you're about. And then you're going to put a link in your bio and you're going to tell them, make sure you sign up for when we open. Now, there are two, well, there are multiple tiers of accounts on TikTok. There's the private account, there's the personal account, there is the business account. If you set up your account as a business account, TikTok will allow you to put a link in bio. The only problem with a business account is that it's, um, it's limited in terms of the kind of um, sounds and audio that you have access to. Number one, um, if you set up your account as a personal account, you have option to the entire video, um, audio library. However, you cannot put your link in bio unless you have 1,000 followers. Okay, so that's the difference there. So if you have zero followers right now, I recommend starting off your account as a business account. And once you surpass 1,000 followers, change your account to a personal account and i say this because i personally feel like um videos on, on business accounts are somewhat suppressed because they probably want you to pay for marketing so i recommend using the personal account or the creator account especially if you have over 1000 followers okay now that you have your account set up that's fine now we're going to go into the type of content which I was talking about prior to talking about this. You're going to create content that's going to get people to see you. You're going to focus on the solutions that you have. Nobody has time to talk about all the deep stuff. We will get to the deep stuff, but for right now, you want content that will attract people to you and follow you. And social media is a place where people go to either be entertained or to learn how to do something or to learn how to solve their own their own problems. Okay, and honestly, TikTok right now is almost like a small YouTube because if I have any problems, I'm gonna go to TikTok. How do I do this? And that's what you want to um, you want to tap into. So create educational content around your niche and post it on social media. But at the end of each video and in your caption, you're going to add a call to action. And the call to action is make sure you sign up on my website for when I launch to get a unique coupon code. Okay. Or it could be make sure you sign up on my website to get early access to early access on launch day, which means you're going to give them access two hours before your launch, some kind of incentive to get people to give you the email and to sign up and the reason why you need people to give you their email address and phone number is because you want to have a list of contacts that you can directly email when you launch your brand and even if you have any other sales host your launch okay it's nice to have a thousand a hundred thousand followers on social media if instagram goes down for 24 hours your business has gone down for 24 hours hence why you need to build your email list i'm going to do a whole different video about email marketing but make sure you're collecting emails and phone numbers on your website okay so you're posting content people are signing up people are following you that's amazing once people sign up you're going to send them an um, automatic email address um, you're going to send them an automatic email welcoming them saying hey thanks so much for signing up i'm super excited for us to be going through this journey and launching my new brand i appreciate your support and i cannot wait for you to um experience the amazingness of what my product is what you're doing there is you're telling your audience that we are in this together this is our brand you know you're making them feel as though they're part of your story and that's how you sell okay 
now in your email is when you start doing the storytelling you can now send them talk about how you suffered from acne and you know you've been looking for a solution for some time now and after doing this i finally found a solution to the problem and i cannot wait to share it with other women because i want to empower women i want people to feel confident i want you guys to always remember something sell solutions not products sell empowerment sell confidence self sell the solution that your product provides not the product yes you sell a cream there are a lot of creams out there but what is unique about you and unique about your brand and that's what you want to communicate to your audience and that's how they're going to come and give you their money and buy from you okay so um, we sent them the email once they signed up the next thing we're going to do is maybe one week into it you're going to send another email another email would be hi guys or hi besties or hi friend our launch day is almost around the corner and i just wanted to you know give you guys some sneak peek of what we're getting up to you can show them some behind the scenes of your photo shoot or show them some behind the scenes of how you develop your products you're just going to carry people along okay it's weird when you just go to people and say it's twenty dollars buy it i don't know you why am i spending twenty dollars of my money but if you know you said hey i wanted to do this i want you to come with me you've carried me along i feel more inclined to shop from you so after seven days you send them another email just carrying them along giving them an update you're going to send one more email and it would be closer to your launch so i'll say maybe two days before your launch and i'm going to say oh my gosh i'm so excited our launch is in all is our is in two days and you know this is your unique coupon code for when we launch you're going to give them all the instructions of how to get into your website you know of what their coupon code is it's special to them people like to feel special this coupon code is just special to you nobody else has it and you only have it because you signed up and i appreciate you for signing up you give them the coupon code and on launch day you send them one final email saying we're open we're live go shop have fun I appreciate you and people going to shop from you because they feel as though they're a part of your story and you're also going to do the same on social media you're going to keep telling your story you're going to post about your business post about your launch and that's how you have a successful launch okay um we're almost to the end of this video i mean if you've watched to this point make sure that you like and subscribe send it to a friend just support. the only way that you guys can support me is by um liking um leaving a comment to let me know what your thoughts were and sharing this um, video to your friends and to your family um i've always tried to do um uh, youtube but i never stay consistent because i feel like i put a lot of um work and a lot of value out there and i feel like the the, the platform doesn't push my content anyway but yeah that's how you can support me okay so like i said let's let's recap and bring everything together to start a business it's fun it's it's exciting to have a product that people love and you know people feel like yes this product um helps me and you know helps my confidence and just impacting people's life it's amazing but it's also a lot of work okay as you guys can see i've said a lot of things that you guys will need to know how to do photos website design social media email marketing product sourcing um it's just there's a lot of parts to it so it's important that you guys are um ready and also that you guys remain consistent consistency is the key here you have to keep being consistent it doesn't matter if you posted a video and it gets 50 views you just have to be keep being consistent all right promote your business promote your brand keep posting another thing that i want you guys to remember is that don't be upset don't be sad if you have family or friends that doesn't support your business because they're not your target audience they're not the ones that would help you make a hundred thousand dollars or two hundred 
or one million dollars. It's not your family or your friends. It's strangers on the internet that don't know you, that has never met you, that just bought into your story as a person and as a brand and they stand behind what you're offering. That's it. So don't be discouraged. Don't be sad that people are not supporting you. They're not buying from you. Your friends, especially your friends and your family, they're not your target audience. Okay. Make sure that you stay consistent, keep hosting, keep showing up. And that's how you're going to get the result that you want. Okay. So, um, like I said, in this video, I do have a detailed, um, tutorial, a detailed course on how to set up your website i'll link that in the description i also have a detailed marketing course i'll leave that in the description and i do have a couple of other things as well that i will link in the description you can check it out you can buy something learn something that's the only thing you can also do for yourself as a business owner is to keep learning and like what you're doing right now watching this video to the end or buying an ebook buying a course from people who people who do the business okay i'm not talking about people selling courses that I've never sold anything online in their entire life. I'm talking about people who actually do the business because personally, I'm going to only talk about the things that I know. I'm not going to come online and chat about things that I have no idea how to do. You cannot come and ask me, how do you do Forex trading? Oh, I don't know. I've never done Forex trading, but when it comes to, um, an e-commerce store, I'm your girl. Okay. I've, it's what I currently do and um, it's something that you can do as well if only you're willing to learn learn how to do it and um, and do it and be consistent okay I don't know how long this video was like I said before this is my second time filming this video um, the first time I had issues with my SD card and even now I've had multiple issues with my microphone so I don't even know maybe God doesn't want me to make this type of content because i'm like what is going on anyway if you really enjoyed this video please like please share please comment let me know what your thoughts are what kind of videos would you guys like to learn i know i've said a lot in this video and you guys might want me to break it down a little bit further so let me know what you want to learn and i will make more videos like that okay um but yeah thanks for watching and i will see you guys in my next video until then stay blessed. Bye.